All right, Guild Wars 2 is the strangest MMO I've ever played. This is not a Guild Wars 2 video, but the point is, objectively, it's the strangest one. It throws the rule book out. SWOTORS, though, has managed to feel even more bizarre to me, because it turns out there's quite a lot to do, but it is a vast exercise in trying to get as much game out of as little content as possible. Not greed, not stinginess, capability, circumstance. When the new expansion launches with the main story, one dungeon with a raid and a daily zone yet to come, you know something's up. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's get the lay of the land first. Operations are SWOTORs taken raiding, flashpoints are there taken dungeons. Multiple difficulty levels, kind of what you'd expect. PvP, you've got 8v8 objective, 4v4 TDM. Then there's the conquest track. Basically covers everything, but it's pretty damn important to the solo players as well. It's this system where basically any effort you do, pretty much, will tie into moving your conquest bar up, that will progress a battle pass like reward track thing. The idea basically is you've always got some reward to grind out. Now, the other part of solo gameplay is running weekly heroic and daily planets. Of course, being MMO gamers, we've got fucked brains, melted brains. So, of course, the framing for all this content is making numbers go up. And to support that, BioWare redesigned gearing for Legacy of the Sith. So to understand what they want us to play, let's see how they've designed progressing our characters. Gearing, right, it's an MMO, grind, grind, grind. Swotor gearing then is a strange thing. As in WoW, there are a few different tracks of gear corresponding to the types of things that you actually do at the end game, be that operations, flashpoints, conquest, which is more the solo stuff, and PvP which also includes the Galactic Starfighter mode. Oh yeah, that. So right now, Galactic Starfighter is the fastest way to gear up your character initially. That's a bit strange. Anyway, here is a chart of the gearing tracks that exist. Of course, note how the difficulties kind of split out there. For flashpoints and operations, you basically get gear drops and you get currency, corresponding to the difficulty that you do. The thing though is, that gear is going to be not dropping from bosses at an upgrade to you. No, instead, you get that gear, and then you progressively upgrade it using the various currencies. Now, that's the weird thing. You can proc an upgrade from a boss, but you don't normally get those upgrades. Those just give you more gear at that item level. A lot of gear is legacy bound, so that's pretty awesome. Send it to your characters. Maybe you can deconstruct it for some more resources. But that's it. Now, of course, when you do your weeklies, you actually get guaranteed upgrade boxes to your lowest item level slot. That's a pretty sweet system. So to progress your gear in, say, veteran flashpoints, you do veteran flashpoints, ideally the weeklies. The gear that you get will drop and not be an upgrade. You can then upgrade that gear at the vendor with currencies that you get from doing that and a few other bits of content. Then, of course, that weekly, which can be done three times, will give you a box, and that box will give you a guaranteed upgrade to your lowest item level piece. That's mostly it. Log in, do content, get rewards. What's odd, though, is right now gearing up via the PvP track doing Galactic Starfighter is actually so fast, and I don't really think it kind of depends if you win that much, that you're basically best doing Galactic Starfighter. And you want to do that to increase your item level, because item level matters, because then when you go into another bit of content, you'll have that minimum item level up, so it'll be faster. It's a really funky system. Item level's not king either, though. Basically, your stats and stuff, that's better on the progressively better colored gear. A bit odd. Solo players, then, what do you do? It's all about uh, conquest, that big bar that you fill by doing a vast array of activities. By the time I hit 80, I had filled up my conquest bar. That meant I got 200 for currency that meant that I could buy the full set of I level 320 gear to start off with. If I want to upgrade that gear, basically got to do a lot of the heroics, a lot of daily planets. A lot, a lot, a lot of daily planets. That gets you a currency that you use, along with credits, to slowly upgrade that gear. And a nice thing about all this, though, is if you're doing things in alts, 
way, way faster. Pretty sweet. That's gearing. Do your weeklies, your weekly repeatable stuff, fill your personal conquest, various other activities. The question then, how does that make me feel? All right, this is where I hit a wall, okay? This is where it feels weird. And we've all been there, right? Max level, new MMO, don't know what the fuck's going on. So, of course, we do our research. I find out all the things I just told you. And for SWOTOR, that's where some uh, emotions, some feelings bubbled up. Kind of changed things a bit for me. Figuring all that out decreased my motivation to play. And look, here's the thing. I don't mess around in this channel. It's all about what I enjoy. So quickly enough, I realized that the reason I had intrinsic motivation to play SWOTOR, the reason why I have enjoyed the hell out of playing this game thus far, is because I like the world. I like the setting. I like the story. I like the fantasy. It's one of the few slices of Star Wars that I really feel I mesh with. And that's the thing. I haven't done a bunch of the origin stories. Like, the only one I've actually fully completed is Sith Warrior. Dabbled in an agent. Dabbled in Bounty Hunter way back in the day. And right now, when faced with doing this gearing, I'd rather do another origin story. One I haven't done before. But that wouldn't be too fair. So I did decide to do some solo content, group Flashpoint content, and to see just what the hell Galactic Starfighter is all about. So Galactic Starfighter is the first thing that I did. But context. Freelancer is one of my favorite games of all time. Totally a beloved 7 out of 10, but hey, it is what it is. What I liked is SWOTOR's Galactic Starfighter uses the same control scheme. And being PvP, it's actually got a bit more depth while still maintaining some simplicity. Now, I do have a major criticism, but beside that, it's a pretty strong mode. Right. You move using the mouse, you aim using the mouse, A and D roll, W and S are the throttle, then F1 through F4 are your power configurations, you know, max power to shields, thrusters, blasters, or just balanced. So nice, that throws in a bit more depth when you're playing. Targeting is really simple. Uh, you can select who last damaged you, who center screen, and then tab target. And, you know, nice little aiming reticle and all of that. It's, it's the standard for a space game and it works. It's simple to learn. It doesn't have the most depth in the universe, but it is enough to actually have a good bit of fun with. And I, I got into the groove, flying around, blasting. At a fundamental level, that's just satisfying to me. But I am biased towards that. Now, what about the big problem? That's easy. Damage feedback is bloody pathetic. Compared to taking hits in even an old game like Freelancer or newer ones like Star Citizen or Elite, it's pathetic. The audio feedback is so weak you barely notice you're being shot. The visual effects aren't that good either. Too much of that relies on the UI. Now, this is a essential part of game feel and game readability that they have, I would say, inexplicably bungled. And that is shocking to me because a fix would be easy. But this feature has been out since 2014. I doubt that feature will come. Aside from that, doing TDM and objective modes, that's fun. As is flying the various different ship types. You can have fast, agile scouts, brawling oriented fighters, bombers, and gunships, your big tanks with uh, rail guns that let them snipe people. That's pretty different. Each has different abilities depending on your loadout, be it a barrel roll, speed boost, or a 180, or even a fortress shield. Beyond that, then, you've got ship configs. Now, these impact your stats, active abilities, passive abilities, and uh, aspects of your loadout. Do you want close range, fast firing blasters or longer range, slower firing ones? On a scout ship, you can only choose one primary weapon, but on my fighter, I could equip both the short range brawling blasters or the sort of longer range ones and swap between them which is all quite nice when you're trying to, you know, do a tight turn or boost away from an opponent, things like that. And as for how it is played in the game, well, it's weeklies and it's dailies. Doing the repeatable weeklies gives you boxes. Those boxes give you gear equal to your current stuff. That gear then is taken to a vendor where it can be upgraded with resources you get from doing Galactic Starfighter. And of course, being SWOTOR, You'll want to run the weekly across multiple characters. And that's a theme in this game. It's kind of expected that you'll be rolling alts. 
Though a nice part of that does mean that actually gearing up your alts is really quite nice in SWOTOR. Now, part of this is because leveling is quite brisk in SWOTOR, and part of that's also because doing the eight origin stories is genuinely a really fun time, and there's a lot of Empire or Republic replayability in the later content, which ultimately does mean people generally do roll quite a few alts in this game, and the way it all works with the legacy system is just pretty sweet. So for some people, they're initially gearing by just doing so much Galactic Starfighter. Okay, solo play. So with Galactic Starfighter being quite a win, I wanted to check out the solo stuff. And it's basically two things, um, right, heroics and then daily planets, okay? So the latter, they're dailies. It's an MMO. What more need I say? <laughs> Even with you being scaled to a planet's level, they're really easy. Stuff like do eight dailies. You do that, you get a bunch of resources and a loot box. The heroic missions then? Well, they're highly similar, but it seems you do three instead of eight, and technically they're scaled for two players. But one of the lovely things about this game is you can just take your companion and solo them. That's great. The question though is, is this fun? <sighs> right, are dailies in MMOs fun in general? I mean, that depends on the context often. With SWOTOR, I don't really care about gearing up my character. That's what I realized. I don't see the point massively for how I'd be playing this game. Now, if you are maining SWOTOR, then sure, 100%, it will feel a good bit more meaningful, and you can go around a bunch of Star Wars planets that you'll know and recognize and do that. But for me, not much point. Okay, what about the other content? Well, that's where we kind of go into the more group things. Um, and this is where motivation is, again, an interesting thing. So SWOTOR is a game that I just like to dick around in for some fun. The flashpoints that I've done have been the story mode ones, which are solo with, uh, well, yeah, solo. Now, those are enjoyable for what they are. I like getting the doses of story in them. The future flashpoints will continue to be on story mode. I'm not necessarily playing this game for a super hard progression MMO, I'm playing this because it's a Star Wars RPG made by Bioware. That's why I'm here. So doing veteran and master mode flashpoints is the sort of thing, it's, it's grand. Look, I remember doing this stuff way, way in the past. And the thing is, it's not changed humongously because they don't add that many flashpoints. But now that I've caught back up to the end game of this game, I just do not see this as a substantial thing that I want to put endgame effort into. It's all good if it's your primary game, but when I select a primary game, I want to know about the game's strengths. I want a solid content cadence. Swartor does not have that, so it's not worth the time investment to me, right? I don't want a game where I just get five more levels to progress with a new expansion, and that comes with one new flashpoint, a revamped gearing, and all I'm doing is getting my character back up to the new high item level. But nothing's really changed, because the expansion isn't really an expansion. As for operations, probably falling under the same category. Probably pretty good. Not as good as Warcraft or FF14. There is less content. Getting my guild over there is just not really going to happen. Now still, this is content that does exist for the people who want to main this game. So yeah. Fair enough, that box is ticked, but it's not ticked as well as other games do, because evidently something is up and Bioware just can't make enough content to really bulk out an MMO. That's the weird thing, so I'm going to bring this into my takeaway now. Right, it's clear that they're doing the best they can with a super limited quantity of content. Now, if you thought that running Shadowlands dungeons in Mythic Plus for a year was a bit much and you got a bit tired of them, well, Swotor has Flashpoint weeklies. The new expansion added one Flashpoint so far. So yes, this game leans super heavily on the legacy content. And that is the smart thing to do for them. Absolutely, it's what they've got. But I would rather not. I prefer the gameplay of Warcraft, I prefer the gameplay of FF. And when I think about what MMO that I like to care enough to actually about, to actually update my characters, keep them all in a decent state, well, they've got to be MMOs that have a good content cadence, that do not have silly problems like what this one has had, that have more regular content, 
more content. And I think those other two games totally have an edge in combat design. So I do like how Bioware have tried to do some things, like keep solo players in mind with their endgame and the cool things you can pull off with your companions. But ultimately, Star Wars The Old Republic just is not, in my opinion, a competitive enough MMO for it to be played as a main game by the general MMO audience. Now, if you want an MMO that literally has lots of things for you to do in the end game, and you like Star Wars, this can work. PvP weeklies, and I mean, from, from my experience in the past, the PvP's fun in this game. Flashpoint weeklies. Daily and heroic weeklies. And the dailies. Operation weeklies. Lots of alts to level. Alts to do weeklies on. And then there's the Galactic Seasons feature, meaning that, yeah, you've got a big old battle pass to grind through. So they clearly cannot make the content quantity, but they are doing as good a job as they can of actually giving you reasons to play your characters over time. But that ain't enough for me, though. And basically, that means I'm going to dabble in this game every now and then, whenever I want to do an origin story. I will not engage in the end game much at all now that I have, you know, I've had my old knowledge of when I played this game on launch and then a bit when I dived into it later on. I've now updated that to what the current state of the end game is like. And yeah, there's other features that exist like uprisings, but they seem to be a bit abandoned. And, and that just means that I, I don't think this game really has it as an end game MMO to play, but that's okay because I'll log in for the story updates. What is the next stage in this Republic Empire war that is brewing? I would like to know. I would like to play that. And while that content is somewhat infrequent and a bit short, I actually think it's quite fun. So my final recommendation here is surprisingly positive. It is that everybody who is interested in a slice of old Republic era narrative gameplay should play this game. Pretty broad recommendation, actually. But if you're thinking, oh, I want to get my teeth stuck right into a brand new MMO and I want it to be my game. I want to ascend to the top of that game. I, I just look at this and I really don't see it. I don't see it at all. But with that said, there's a humongous amount of game for you to play. And a lot of people will get a hell of a lot out of this game, just not the end game, in my opinion. Electronic Arts needs to work out what they want from this game if it's going to be a properly competitive MMORPG in a market that has got, let's see, World of Warcraft, Lost Ark, Final Fantasy XIV, and actually quite a few other games as well, then they need to make investments. The technical side of the game. They need to fix the awful UI revamp. Players have quite a few criticisms over some of the class changes that have happened with the whole, you know, two advanced uh, classes on a character change that they've made. They need to work on those things. I've heard lots of reports of people being banned in the forums or being critical. They need to not do that. They need to invest in more content production capacity. Uh, SWOTOR actually appeared in the most recent earnings call slide from Electronic Arts, and it was a slide that was all about their successful live games. Surely then it is worth throwing more resources at this game. Finally then, I do want to leave you with more than I found you with. I have a massive recommendation. Swoterista mentioned her channel uh, before for the story uh, guide video. It's great. There's also a written post. Uh, but for other things, like if you want to understand gearing, various different types of content, tutorials, things like that, that absolutely is the place to go. So if you've watched this little three-part series that I've done in my hop back into a game that I have been familiar with in the past, and uh, it's piqued your interest, head over to her channel, that's definitely the next place for you to check out. As for what's going on over here, the next two games in my radar are, of course, continuing my Guild Wars 2 progress, as well as hopping into ESO, because they have a new chapter coming out in June, and I keep on hearing good things about this game. So stay sub for that stuff, as well as ongoing FF14 fun. And with that said, I'll see you next time.